thank you for this opportunity to interact with you as we assess progress of our country. Uh, <clears throat> in, in economic terms, as well as transformation since the onset of democracy in 1994. Looking back at the 20-year period of economic transformation in South Africa, the democratic state can truly be proud of its record while simultaneously recognizing its failures. The democratic government inherited an economy that, uh, that was in crisis, depended heavily on mineral exports, and was characterized by deep inequalities and rising unemployment. I would first like to focus on key accomplishments before discussing the challenges we face as well as continued government efforts to address them. Since 1994, the South African economy has grown at an average rate of over 3% a year. To put this in perspective, in the 15 years before democracy, growth was, was under 1.5% a year. Since 1994, employment has grown by around 4.5 million, or about 45%. In contrast, the economy generated almost no new jobs from the late 1970s through 1994. As a result, the share of adults with employment had plummeted from around 60% to under 40%. Growth, economic growth since then has stabilized this employment ratio with around 42% of adults employed today, still far too low by global standards, but at least some improvement on the past. In 1994, the rate of investment was less than 15% of GDP. Today, the figure is over 19%, which is a marked improvement that takes us nearer to the 20% threshold. Especially since 2005, investment has been underpinned by a multi-billion rand outlay in infrastructure, which is laying the foundations for faster and more inclusive growth in the future. The share of the labor force with post-secondary education has risen to 17% almost exactly the norm for middle-income economies, excluding China and India, which was much lower. Some 8% of working age people have a degree, compared to 5% in 1994. <coughs> Finally, we brought down poverty rates substantially over the past 18 years. In 1994, over 25% of households with children said they had gone hungry at some point or another. In 2012, the figure had fallen to 6.5%, still unacceptably high, but a vast improvement nonetheless. Importantly, in the, 20, in the past 20 years, growth has normalized despite the global setback of 2008 recession, while investment has improved and positions of power in the economy are becoming more representative. And I know here that uh, uh, my colleague here, Jimmy Manye, uh, will take issue with this point. In short, we can be proud of our economic record, but we also have to be aware of two remaining challenges, challenges that we need to address to bring about a better life for all going forward. First, while poverty has declined, inequality has not. Second, the economy has not diversified sufficiently and manufacturing in particular has grown only slowly. The fastest growing industries have been telecommunications and the financial sector. In contrast, manufacturing has fallen from 20% of GDP to 10% in the past 18 years. To ensure sustained growth going forward, we will need to reverse this trend. Ladies and gentlemen, working our way out of
current challenges means investing in innovation through research and development, which will be a shot in the arm of our, for our efforts to diversify the economy. Innovation is the impulse that propels modernization and consistently empowers societies that are largely successful today. Therefore, going forward, we need to invest in local capacity that enables us to research new ways of value addition to our mineral resources. Finally, let me reiterate that the democratic state needs to increase efforts to correct its past shortcomings so that with time it is fully capacious to effect social change as the basis for attaining our strategic vision of building unity, democracy, non-racialism, non-sexism, and prosperity for our people.